This episode of the ABC's TPB is sponsored by Tsingtao. Tsingtao! Imported premium lager. If it's good enough for the Chinese, it's good enough for us. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this show brought to us by something completely different every single time? <laughs> we have the weirdest hodgepodge of sponsors. It's just, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a snowflake. It's uh, alternate universes. We... Something is, is each episode in an alternate universe? I think so. Where I mean, this is our sponsor for, for Earth 223? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I guess this is Earth 9. Earth 9. To Earth 9. <laughs> to Earth 9. <laughs> How are we looking on our Gomez graphic, by the way? We're going to get into that. Uh, like, you we to... need to. We're, we're, man, we're so behind on the Gomez yeah, graphic. Right. I don't know, she gave the last one to you. Did she? That much. Yeah, Did she? The last one went to you. Maybe that's why I'm, I'm so hell bent on mentioning it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you ain't said shit about a lady until all of a sudden she just wanted to Where are we on our Gomez graphic? Where are we, where are we now? That's, that's one point. That's five points received. One extra point for Dave. <laughs> all right. What is up, man? It's another episode of the ABC of the TPBs. Uh, I am one of your hosts, Seed. I'm the other one, Ninja Dave. Ninja Damn Dave. And on this podcast, we're talking about comic books. This is the I episode. Um, and this episode... There's I, no I in team. There's no I in team. There's a me, but we're not here to talk about me or me. We're here to talk about <laughs> the eyes. All right? Uh, I is for image. For me, actually, for both. For both uh, of us. Both are issue. I is for image. My I is Invisible Republic. Uh, written by Gabriel Hardman. If I remember correctly, the story is both by Gabriel Hardman and Karina Becco. They usually work as a team. Mm -hmm. And the art is by Jordan Boyd. Mm. Um, Invincible's coming up no, next. I'm sorry. The, uh, the art is also by Gabriel Hardman. Uh, Jordan Boyd did the colors. And Invincible's coming up next after Indeed. the jump. Yes. Um, Gabriel Hardman and Karina Becco, always a team, uh, from what I've seen. They also did, just very recently, for DC, uh, uh, the Earth One, Green Lantern Earth One. Green Lantern Earth One. It was amazing. I just picked up because uh, I've already read the Superman Earth One, and I I, uh, and I picked up the Batman Earth One mm -hmm. based on your recommendation, and I, I freaking loved it. Got it at uh, got it at Heroes Con, <laughs> uh, and I loved it. I didn't know that they were going to do. I didn't know how much more they had planned from the Earth One universe. The Green Lantern just hit. Yeah, yeah, they've got uh, three volumes of Superman Earth One, mm -hmm. two volumes of Batman Earth One. I heard volume three is supposed to come out next year. Okay. They have one volume of Teen Titans. Earth mm -hmm. One. Mm -hmm. They have one volume of Wonder Woman Earth One. And Green Lantern, well, I, I think there's only one of Teen Titans. And Green Lantern is the newest Earth One. I, I think with all these Earth One books, because I think Straczynski's Superman Earth One came out before Batman vs. Superman. Is that yes. Right? That's the right they should have gone with Superman. That, uh, yes, I agree. Because mm -hmm. it seems like they've done, they just pretty much taken everything in DC and modernized it. Like, mm -hmm. Origins for a modern day. Mm -hmm. And I have been loving every second of it, man. It's the only Superman I can actually stomach to read, because mm -hmm. I'm not a Superman fan. Mm -hmm. But uh, that Straczynski, uh, Superman Earth 1 Volume 1 is very good. Um, and I think the quality kind of dips in 2 and it dips again in 3. Mm -hmm. But I really like Superman Earth 1 Volume 1. Okay. Yeah I, yeah, I dug that too. Yeah, and then I think how's how's Batman been doing? I love it. Uh, I got it on the uh, on the insistence of Pop Rick and Les Boyd, hmm. and he's like, "You need to check out this Batman Earth One." And I held off on it, and I I fucked around for months, and finally I checked it out. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, it's been two years maybe since they've done it, and I I remember really really liking them both. Hmm. Uh, the mm -hmm. Alfred uh, is much more. Alfred from Gotham. Yeah. Like Alfred's not just a butler. Like, he was a badass special ops dude and all this kind of shit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Wonder Woman Earth 1 is... Ugh, ugh, it was a rough one, you know? A rough one, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I was like, let me keep quiet on this shit. And then somebody on Twitter one day was like, is it just me or is that Wonder Woman Earth 1 suck? And I was like, oh, thank God there other people didn't say that. Mm, okay. And I just don't care about the Teen Titans enough to read theirs. Really? Okay. Yeah. Fair I enough. met a huge Green Lantern guy and I was like, if there's any jumping on point... This would be the jump on point. And right. I read it about a week and a half ago. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Gabriel Harbin and Karina Becco did that. They also did this. Invisible Republic is mm. what we're here to talk about. Enough of that Earth One nonsense. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the back of the tray here says a secret journal, a disgraced reporter, a fallen regime, a woman erased from history. Past and present collide on the remote moon of Avalon where nothing is as it seems. 
from creators Gabriel Hardman and uh, New York Times bestselling author Karina Becco. Invisible Republic begins an epic story of revolution, deception, and the power of an individual to change worlds. Man, uh, so this is a uh, this is like a a political sci-fi type of deal, man. Mm-hmm. Um, this is one of the ones I think I found it at a con. I opened it up and I was like, oh, this art seems interesting. I need some kind of new sci-fi in my life. Sure. Picked it up on a whim with no uh, research into it, and I, I really, really dug it. Hmm. Uh, what are your initial thoughts about this bit of business? Oh, I, I loved it. Yeah? I, I really enjoyed it. Um, <clears throat> I, I only had one qualm with it, and that was to get more of an idea of what the present-day situation was. Okay. Uh, so, Volume 2... Uh, Deals almost exclusively, if I remember correctly, in present day. Okay, so this okay. So that volume one pretty much is, I mean, chronologically, a prequel to <laughs> what's, what's going on there. I mean, we, we get dumped into this um, uh, this this world, and we find out that uh, one of the people who who was responsible for getting the system of government to the state that it's in now uh, may have had a secret history that. The, the populace didn't know about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, mo- uh, this book takes uh, a lot of time jumping back and forth between the present and the past, and you mm-hmm. kind of see. Uh, so let's guys get into it, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah, so it. There, there's, I would say there's, uh, there's three main people you're following mm-hmm. uh, throughout this business. Uh, one, for everything set in the past, is this guy Arthur McBride, who will eventually become some sort of influencer of events, a dictator, possibly some might call him, mm-hmm. um, all that kind of good stuff. It follows uh, him. He's uh, one of the, the main people. It's one of those dudes and stories that you hear hear more about than you actually see. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the more main, reputation is important. Reputation is important. One of the more main focuses is his cousin. Mm-hmm. I do believe it was. Yes. Yeah. His cousin, cousin slash sister. Yeah. Something either cousin or sister. I can't yeah. remember which one. Uh, uh, what was her name? Maya or something like that. I do. Yeah, Maya. Maya. Yeah. Um, that the world really doesn't know about. Uh, mm-hmm. They're kind of living off the grid. Mm-hmm. Um, they get approached by, you know, whatever passes for law enforcement peacekeeping, and they're mm-hmm. like, what the fuck y'all doing out here? Yeah. Things get a little confrontational. They clap them fools up, right? Um, mm-hmm. And that sends them kind of on the run from mm-hmm. this whole thing. Because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, one of the officers' body cam uh, kind of gets uh, the whole scuffle that takes place, the killing that takes place, mm-hmm. and that kind of leads to the beginning sparks of this revolution. In this one, you kind of uh, you kind of root for the the quote unquote bad guys, <clears throat> if, if you want to call them that, because the the system that they're they're a part of it's not it's not great to begin with. I mean, no, there's, there's no. a lot of corruption. There's, there's almost almost uh, like what things in the world are going towards today, almost a kind of a legalized slavery. Yeah. of uh, of people, kind of indentured servants and what have you. Um, and they're just trying to, you know, eke out their own living, and you know, the the system, won't, you know, is is fighting uh, fighting them to uh, to you know, keep them in place, keep them in check. And he obviously has um, other ideas. Other ideas. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this this book jumps back and forth between the past, where, where that scuffle happens, and the present, where he has enacted change in some kind of way. Mm-hmm. And you know, he's kind of, I would say, like half revered, half. Not liked, mm-hmm. I think is a, a good way of putting it. Oh, well, you know, feared is a fear. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the present kind revered of focus, and feared, revered and feared. <clears throat> uh, so the the present focuses on a disgraced journalist, mm-hmm. Kroger Bab, which with a name like that, then you're gonna end you up being you can't do anything but yeah, yeah. I think the, your only life's destiny with a name like Kroger Bab is to be a disgraced journalist. <laughs> <laughs> you um, have to get embroiled in some type of uh, controversy. Yeah, uh, turn out to be the one who. Uh, Kind of facilitated that, and then you know, disgraced for for the rest of your days. Pretty much, pretty much. He <laughs> finds what appears to be the secret journal of of Arthur McBride, dictator Arthur McBride's uh, invisible sister, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And uh, he's like, I think I got a story here, and mm-hmm. then it becomes all about certain people trying to get this journal from him to either silence him, mm-hmm. shut him up, whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. and. Uh, him trying to kind of get back to the prominence that he used to have mm-hmm. while he's tracking down this story. Mm-hmm. Um, and the whole thing just bounces back and forth between the beginnings of this revolution and we see where the revolution has, where it has led them as he, you know, tries to further uncover the truth. I, I really love the way they even pre- presented the, the <clears throat> these lost journal pages. Some hobo was burning them for, for heat. 
Just a big stack of them just yeah, I think going to town. That's the one thing I didn't like about this whole thing. is It was just a little too convenient. Too convenient. Yeah, yeah, it's it's too late now. To have, just having us to look at the one page that's about to be burned. And he's right. like, well, what's this stack of papers? Right. You know, The hidden history. It's all here. It's all here. Let me yeah. stuff this in a duffel bag and make my big story. Yeah, it, 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 was, it wasn't very convenient. But I just thought how... I, I liked how, yeah, how they just presented as a, here it is. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like how <laughs> we're we're gets, not going to make this too crazy. Yeah, you know? how he gets the pages is not important mm-hmm. as what happens once he finally gets his hands on the pages. Mm-hmm. And that's when shit gets nice and wild. You think it, it would have served the story better to, for him to have anonymously received these pages? No, because that's another level of storytelling that we didn't need. Because mm-hmm. then it becomes, then everybody's asking, well, where did you get the where did you get the pages from? Mm-hmm. And then that's just a whole other level that the writers have to worry about, you know, threading that all through everything else. Oh, okay, I, I think you. him just happening across it uh, is good enough for me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Even yeah. though you hated that. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's, it's it's just, you know, just to keep the, I understand just to keep the, keep the plot moving, keep things going, but, mm-hmm. you know, it is what it is. If, if that's my, if how he got his information is my biggest nitpick, mm-hmm. I think we're doing all right. All right. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, let's talk about the art. In, in, in this uh, this little bit of business here, mm-hmm. it's also written, or it's uh, the art is also by its writer Gabriel Hardman. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the fact that uh, the colors seem by Jordan mm-hmm. Boyd mm-hmm. are very muted. They are muted all throughout this. Mm-hmm. Like even the explosions aren't like bright and flashy yeah, on the page. It, it gives you that kind of realism, kind of gritty realism. Uh, everything yeah. everything in this this world because this world is kind of is kind of kind of that used future type. You know, we're trying to settle this in in, in in space, but, you know, we don't have the best resources, so everything looks very dirty constantly. Everything's very Star Wars. It's like Star Wars has a very dirty, lived-in universe. Original Star Wars. Original Star Wars. Star Wars. Or, yeah. or Firefly, if you would. Or Firefly, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, would, I would compare them to either one of those joints. Mm. Um, I had a, uh, an idea for a, a story, sci-fi story, that's in a... A similarly set world, mm-hmm. which I think was another motivation of why I brought this. I like, mm-hmm. I like the way this world looks on the page, mm-hmm. uh, and you know, I think it's a story is always better when it's drawn by the person who's writing it as well. Mm-hmm. There's no miscommunication between what's in my head and what All I right. want on the page. They know exactly what they want, and they can, they can without losing anything in translation, bring that to life. We should have spent more time in art school, my friend. Uh, no, it's just like a talent I will never have. <laughs> well, I'm saying, I'm saying, you know, yeah. A talent I will never have. Anything can happen if you're immortal. Okay. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if you're dropping some kind of weird hints there, sir. Well, you know, just look that way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so you so you, you dug this bit of it. Uh, is there anything in particular that stood out to you or, or any character that uh, did you relate with? Or is there any twist or turn that you're like, ah, oh, I didn't see that coming? I saw the, the twist at the end coming. Oh, uh-huh. right, no. twist at the end. Spoilers. Um, it's right here? Yeah, I did, I did okay. see that coming. Well, of course, they, they set it up. I mean, it, it was it, it, it yeah, was bound it. to happen. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I... Um, I don't know. It was. I was kind of letting the, the story just take me for a ride uh-huh. to see where it was going. Um, I was more interested in that whole because I'm very interested in, in revolutions. Everything from Che Guevara to you know Scott Summers when he actually finally grew up here. Oh, you mean the terrorist Scott Summers? Yeah, okay. the mutant terrorist. The Scott terrorist. Summers, yep. Forming the X. Like that's been so popular in media. You you got him doing it. You got. Uh, the, the the Wakandans. Yeah. You, you got Wonder Woman. Everyone's doing the X, man. Doing the X Everyone, because I mean, even even sometimes Wolverine does it. As yeah, well. so even time they X twenty three. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah. I mean, I think I think the the takeaway from this. I think we were talking about this earlier. That the only one thing is going to give it to you, and that's X. <laughs> <laughs> and a completely off the mic, unrelated story. Mm. Um, we after months of research, knowing this story, we finally got to the bottom of this. And we found out that the rumors are true. Mm. X indeed is going to give it to you. X indeed is yes. going to give it to you. No one else can give it to you, but yeah. X. Uh, what do What do you think about Arthur McBride? I find him kind of a. He's one of those. I think like a lot of people know that guy. That's just he's got to have a beard. I mean, he usually rocks the flannel shirts, mm-hmm. like uh, horn room glasses usually. Mm-hmm. Or glasses with no frames. It's just the glass and everything set into the glass. Mm-hmm. 
that's just always like he gets drunk and he's like we gotta enact this change or he gets high uh-huh. we gotta enact this he's, he's, he's one of those like super philosophical douchebags mm-hmm. okay that's kind of how I, how I found really right yeah, yeah I yeah, saw yeah. him more as a a just a, a pure survivor mm-hmm. he doesn't have any other skill but to get over from his present situation mm-hmm. okay. if he sees something that will give him a leg up he's gonna take it he's, he's, yeah he, he's an opportunist he's not gonna say sit back and, and think well, I don't know if I should have that or not. It's, it's more of, I want that, I'm going to take it. Okay. All right, even fair. even his, as they allude to later on in the story, his, his rise to power, he took something that could have been used against him and then t- transformed it into something that he could use. Yeah. Okay. You know? And so, yeah, the, 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 what we thought would be a disadvantage of him mm-hmm. um, being caught on that body camera killing mm-hmm. his officers, he kind of took it and flipped it yeah. into his image that became the image, that's the, the thing, symbol man. of the revolution. That's the thing, man. It's, it's all about perception. It's all about perception. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, the people, are they, they, just, they just judge a book by its cover. Uh, even if you come back later and say, hey, here's the, the, the harsh truth, and that's my thing about this the story. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, even if they... You know, quote unquote, blow the lid off of the story. People are going to be like, eh. Oh yeah, I mean, like when they they catch uh, the secret tapes about, you know, leaders just talking about, you know, fondling body parts and whatnot. Nobody no, seemed to care. No one seemed to care. Nobody no, seemed no to care. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's yeah, like, hey, it's, what's, done, what's done is done. We, you know, we have our tacos. We have our ninety nine cent tacos now. Yeah. If it, exactly. if, it, if it took a little, you know, whatever tomfoolery, then why not? Exactly. I see what you're saying. Here. Yeah. Um, yeah. What about Maya? What's it's it's corruption from the top down. Go on. Corruption from the top down. Yeah. What about uh, Maya? Which you, oh, you know what? Uh, yeah, what about Maya? Maya? Is she, is she also seems, I think, for me, she seems more of what you're describing uh, Arthur McBride is. Mm-hmm. Maya was more of, of the survivor to me because she was the one who was invisible this whole time. So she just kind of had to float from deal to deal and then she just eventually mm-hmm. got hooked up with the honey guys and yeah, I guess, she found I guess, a sweet gig to ride that all the way out yeah, yeah I can agree with that he, Arthur is more of the opportunist she is more of the survivor okay. she's not very ambitious or driven she does what she needs to if she has to but yeah. most of the time she tries to do use her moral diligence or her moral high horse I guess you could say to, to make her choices for her she wants to have as little impact as possible which is in direct contrast with uh, what Arthur wants. He wants to make the biggest splash possible and he's not afraid to hurt people in the process. Yes. Um, that, that, that. That's the leader that we need. Arthur McBride. Yeah, Arthur McBride. 2020. <laughs> I'd uh, take him over Trump I'd any day. I'd take him over Trump. That's a fictional character. I'd take over Trump any day. And lastly, uh, what about your boy Kroger Babb, who's pretty much the star of the present of this whole thing. Man. He's just trying to eat out a live and so- something happened that just completely killed his credibility. Right. I don't think they actually explained what in this book. I, I feel like he's... Uh, yeah, they, don't, they don't explain what. They just, okay, they yeah. just know that he's disgraced. Uh, the more and more I learn about you know, poor Kroger there, the more and more I just despise him. He's really? Just, he's just kind of a scumbag. You think so? He is. He's, I mean, everything from, <laughs> even the way he just, like, turned up his nose at being stitched, hand stitched. He's like, get <laughs> get that thing away from me. I have money to pay for actual medical treatment. Get the fuck away from me. I've seen this in books. No thanks. <laughs> Uh, I'm bleeding out here, and this may be my only course, but no, thank you. <laughs> um, all right, then. Uh, for me, I think uh, I think he's a little bit of, also a little bit of a, a dude who will do whatever it is. It seems like so many people are just doing what they do to get by. Well, that's, that's, the, that's the whole thing about life on this planet. They're just trying to eke out a living. Yeah. Even with him, he's, and the thing is, he's not... He doesn't have to eke out a living. He has money. He's a sad, but what he wants now is credibility. He wants that redemption. So his his character, I know, <laughs> his character is uh, is going for that redemption. I, and I think that's addition, an additional thing that we are that we're discovering. Um, Maya came back most likely because I, I haven't gotten in, into volume two, but she's she's getting back to redeem her character. She knows that some shit went down. She yeah. didn't speak up about it. She profited from it in some way, some fashion. I mean, she's got a fucking town named after her, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and and then you got you got Arthur, who's I don't know if he's got a redemptive arc, but he's 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 making history. So you've got two characters: the the reporter and uh, and the the sister slash cousin, um, who are trying to do things to make amends. She probably less selfishly than than he. 
Definitely left. Do, do you think he's hustling because he's like this? People need to know the story of what happened, or is he just hustling to get his name back out there? It's both. Both. It's both. It, it, it's not not necessarily to get his name back out there, but to again to redeem the the the, the lost the shame. Yeah, the shame that he's been through. He wants right. to be somebody again. All right, then I can dig that. I can dig that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so when it comes down to it, sir, you got anything else? No, uh, yeah. that's it. Like I said, it's a go for me. I'm so it's a go. Yeah, it's a go for you. Yeah. Volume. This is this is one of the good things about this story, and I'm a huge fan of contained stories. It's only three volumes. Mm. That's it. Three and three done. Volumes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I got two and three and all of there. You mean they're not gonna release? Uh, they're gonna release it in like one big hardback? You would, would you? I don't think so. I don't. I never heard anybody <clears throat> talk about this book. Hmm. I'm not sure. I don't even know when this book was made, to be completely honest with you. Because, I don't even remember, this, this I don't remember was, when I bought this book. This book was just very invisible. It just showed up one day, and you're like, hey, what's this? What's yeah. this tone? Invisible Republic came out in 2015. And I don't, yeah, I don't remember hearing anybody say I think I picked it up in 2016. I'd never heard of it until you mentioned it. I've never heard anybody talk about it. It's just one of Image the has piece. so much stuff that's just, it's it's kind of obscure, but they have a huge library in it. They have a know? huge library. Yeah. Uh uh, if you're listening to this the week it goes up there's a current sale on Image Comics on Comixology 55% off certain Image titles 55% that's a bargain I never see Invisible Republic on any yes. Image sale hmm. um, so it leads me to believe that we will never get an Invisible Republic hard book mm. a hardcover which I have finally conceded that certain titles I would like in hardcover just for a nice bookshelf normally I don't like reading a hardcover book, but I yeah. like a nice display. I would like an Invisible Republic. Interesting. Three volume. Uh, that, that's really that's really odd. that's really odd about the the, the comicsology deals there. Because I mean, again, you've got digital media. You can charge whatever. Excuse me, whatever you like about it. I mean, once you make that initial, hey, we got our money back from this thing, you can charge whatever the fuck you want for the yeah. digital copies yeah. and still make profit. It seems like all the sales are on the same things over and over and over and over. Really? Yeah. But you were thinking they the want to switch thing? it up to. Uh, to introduce Get more new exposure. people to different things. Yeah, yeah but I mean, I, like I, the I humble, was, humble, 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 humble bubbles. bubbles. Yeah, like, yeah. Like they put they they put some different things in from time to time too. But yeah, it's I agree that it's, it's a lot of the same stuff. <clears throat> it's really weird. It is weird. I think that's it for Invisible Republic, man. What do you think of uh, the the world, the world of this man? I like this the world. I want I want to see more of it. That's that's again that's that's kind of my only gripe about it is that. I want to see what more of how the world works, what the system's like, where the like the state of things uh, in the present. Because uh, I think I feel like I got more uh, more background into the state of things, even though it wasn't as much in the past than I did in the present. So mm-hmm. I, I had nothing to really compare. I was like, hey, are we better off? Is it worse off? What's the you know what's the vibe? What's the you know what's the do I need to I need I feel like I need to go to a bar? Yeah, what's world? And, and be like, hey, what's going on? Yeah, you know what's what's the deal? You know, and, and then still I might get stabbed while I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of world that this is. Uh, all right, I, I mean, they had they had giant fucking anvils to keep the buildings from blowing away. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, these cats were in the past just scrabbling, eating some weird lobster shit. So it's a yeah. very very weird. Uh, and in any rate, not quite defined world mm. in this first volume, but mm-hmm. uh, it, it, things kind of expand a little bit, and a little bit more is revealed mm-hmm. uh, in volume two. And I still haven't read volume three; mm. uh, it's on the list. Okay, fair enough. All right, I think that's going to do it for Invisible Republic, sir. Uh, right. We are going to be right back after the uh, after the uh, audio break, and we're going to be mm-hmm. talking about Invincible. Invincible. Let us do this, then we can talk. What you want to talk about, Rick? These things ain't sick. They're not people. They're dead. Ain't got to feel nothing for them, because all they do, they kill. These things right here, they're the things that killed Amy. They killed Otis. They got to kill all of us unless we do Hey, Herschel, man, let me ask you something. Did a living, breathing person, did they walk away from this? Stop three rounds in the chest. Because someone who's alive, could they just take that? Why is it still coming? That's a tarp. It's long. Why is it still coming? Shane, enough. Hey, you're right, man. That is enough. All right, we're back from the break. We're about to jump on this Invincible talk. This is Ninja Dave. We've got seed at the ready. Mm. Before we do, we're going to give a shout out to our to Alicia Gomez, our number one listener. 
All right, then we're going to discuss the Gomez graphic. Now, she gave us some feedback. She gave us some feedback on, on, the, on the ages. Uh, on the ages, man. We're a little bit late with this. Uh, let's yeah, let's right. be honest with the people. We're a little bit late. We're, I think we're like a week late. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, it yeah, happens, it all right? Happens. Like, we, we think the like important thing shows. is we, we, we have it here today. That's, that's what's important is you're listening right now. Yes. So, this is what, uh, if you remember correctly, our last episode was the ages. Uh, Hadrian's Wall and Hard Target, right? Hadrian, Human Target. Hadrian's, Hadrian's Wall. And human target. <laughs> this is what young Miss Gomez, I've known this woman for over a decade now, mm. has to say about this joint. All right. You guys are adorable. We're adorable. We're adorable. Dave, we are. One highlight being your attempt to, to pronunciate things correctly. <laughs> the title is any reference to the Hadrian's Wall. It's made of the northern edge of the Roman Empire and uh, Britannia separating it from the Pict. Uh, then it's pronounced like H A Y Hadrian. Hadrian. Yeah. It is also. The Hadrian's Wall is also the influence for George R. R. Martin's The Wall in Game of Thrones. So I was right. Yes, you were right. Oh! Uh, curious to know if that has any relevance to the story based on the review. It does not. Uh, <laughs> this one is the clear winner for me to check out. So, uh, so you take point for the uh, pronunciation. Yeah. Take a point for the story. There you go. I mean, I, we both went on that because we both loved it. Yeah, so like I said, it evens out. Yeah. Uh, other well, no, well, well, you know, so I mean, if we both get a point, and then I'll get the extra point of the wait, 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 I really do just kind of eke out. <laughs> uh, other highlight involved the very real friend strawberry candies. We recorded so long ago, I forgot we talked about strawberry candies. Oh, um, did we? In the East, we call them bonbons. bonbons. And yeah, I've definitely found out what happens to them in your pocket after days of neglect. <laughs> And uh, uh guys, guys, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you ever seen a fuzzy strawberry? Uh, good luck on the weight loss challenge. Now, uh, P.S. I was your number one fan, but then Ninja Dave has going poo poo on Rogue One, which hurts, man. Legit, no lie, heartburn. But she still loves us. Well, good, good. You know, so what, it's you know fifteen you, points. For you, you. you know what? You know what hurt though? Watching Rogue One. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. what hurt. That was, that was painful. I saw Solo for the second time, and I enjoyed it way more the second time really? than I did the first time. Did you turn up the light? Did you have a flashlight with you to get out of the, all the dark places? No, but this <laughs> fucking asshole came in there with a flash on his phone trying to find a seat. To, oh, really? I was so mad. Oh, man. Yeah. I should have body slammed him. You should have ripped his arms off like a Wookiee would. Actually, I should have, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Solo, was, Solo was a good bit of fun, man. Like I think the first time I was looking at it, just to see, like, I, I know there's going to be some mistakes in here. I know it's mm-hmm. director controversy. Mm-hmm. The second time, I just sat back and I had a blast with the man. I I, I might have to reevaluate my thoughts on Solo. I thought it was well, you know I thought it was a fine film the first time. Mm-hmm. I really liked it more the second time. You know what? I will watch Solo, but I'm gonna wait until it comes out on some media that makes it easier for me to do so. All right. Well, okay, that makes sense. So when it comes out on like. Netflix, Netflix, or, somebody else yeah, streamed on there. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a fun. You can you can curl up with your lady on a Friday night, man. Yeah. Get you some drinks and watch Solo. Right, I think that's that's a good way to do things. Okay, yeah. All right, I'm, I'm gonna use that model. I mean, yeah, you know, like people. Before we get into Invincible, mm-hmm. I think people give Netflix and chill a bad rap. They do. If well, in, com- in, com- in committed, you know, con- you know, consenting relationships, Netflix and chill. Netflix is and chill is not what the with the Netflix and chill single even when I was single mm-hmm. uh, Netflix and chill did not necessarily mean come over and we're gonna pretend to watch a movie and let's bone sometimes mm-hmm. you wanna I was, watch the movie I was generally like hey this is a movie I think you might enjoy mm-hmm. let's order in sit here and watch this movie now yeah. if some shenanigans happen afterwards that's the cherry on top right but there are specific times where I was like hey let's watch this movie let's watch this movie let's enjoy it let's, let's have these snacks yeah Netflix and chill now sometimes the titties were out in the opening credits but most of the time, but sometimes you have to. Sometimes you have to jump on it because some of these credits are long, man. <laughs> these special effects. I mean, the, the special effects groups by themselves most have pages and pages. Minutes. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, but for the most part, yeah, it's, it's just watch this movie, man. Let me and then let's talk about it. Let me see, what's what, what your head at after this movie? All right. Yeah, I think Netflix and chill. It's a bad rap. Let, let's, let's revive it. Let's revive Netflix and chill. Let's revive let's it for, the, for the positive that it could be. We're both in some committed relationships now. There's yeah. Friday is a is a good time to just, especially if it's like. January, right? Shit going on in the movies. Right. Throw on some Netflix. Cue up something you ain't seen in a while. Mm-hmm. Or Get at s- all. Or at all. Mm-hmm. Get yourself a drink or two. Maybe some wine there. Mm-hmm. Nice. Maybe some hard liquor. Maybe some hard liquor. A little bit of brown. Maybe yeah. Five. Maybe some uh, Maybe some clear. Yeah. Get some pies, you know. Pizza or otherwise. There you go. 
There you go. See? I'm going to bring back the Netflix and chill. 2018, we're bringing it back. All right. And you, hear, you hear that, Netflix? We're uh, we're lobbying for you. That means you need to send some of that sweet Netflix money our way. Well, we're in your corner. Maybe next episode will be sponsored by Netflix. There you go. <laughs> and Earth 10. <laughs> and Earth 10. Yeah. <laughs> Where Netflix is free for the public. <laughs> I mean, let's, let's be honest. Most people are just biting up other people's accounts anyway. So well, it's free for most public now. Right. I mean, every, everyone has Netflix in some form. <clears throat> so, yes. We're getting into Invincible here, mm-hmm. uh, written by Robert Kirkman. Yes, that Robert Kirkman of the Walking Dead fame. <clears throat> mm-hmm. uh, artist Corey Walker. And we've got uh, Pencil- Penciler by uh, Crabtree. Um, so, I'll just, I'll just read kind of the, the blurb for you here. Mark Grayson is just like most everyone else at his age. He's a senior at a normal American high school. He has a crappy part-time job after school and on weekends. He likes girls quite a bit, but doesn't quite understand them. He enjoys hanging out with his friends and sleeping late on Saturdays, at least until the good cartoons come on. The only difference between Mark and everyone else is that his father is the most powerful superhero on the planet, and as of late, he seems to be inheriting his father's powers. Which well, sounds okay at first, but how do you follow in your father's footsteps when you never, well, you know if you'll never live up to his standards? Mm-hmm. This issue, get in on the ground floor because it all starts here. Strange things begin to happen to Mark Grayson as he begins to develop superpowers. Luckily, his dad is around to show him the ropes. At least he would be if he weren't so busy saving the world all the time. Mark is forced to go out on his own and try to figure out all how all the superhero business works. The results are a monumental disaster, at least until he gets the hang of it. Watch Mark thwart thieving supervillains, alien invasions, and all sorts of craziness. So, in this first volume yeah. of Invincible. Four issues. Four issues. issues. Very yeah. a very small, kind of, uh, kind of a, mm-hmm. a little bit just enough to mm-hmm. kind of wet the appetite. Uh, initial thoughts, sir. Initial thoughts were this is the most third grade superhero story I've ever read. Right? Yeah. It's it so is. This shit is so ridiculously is. like I'm I'm not sure if it's just ridiculously simple mm-hmm. because it's written like that or I've just gotten so used to reading and watching stories that are very complex and layered that mm-hmm. that uh, it's been a while since I just I've ingested something that's so on the surfacely simple. Mm-hmm. And let me ask you this also. I'm just going to ask you a series of questions. Um, have you read The Walking Dead? Also by Robert Kirk. Yeah, I'm somewhere in the issue 70 something, 80 something right now. What do you think about that series? I fucking love it. It's great. Yeah, it's great. great. So it's so a why, you know, so you know, now comparing that to this Invincible, what's what's the difference? You see? Because that, that depth and character are it's in The Walking Dead is mm-hmm. absent from Invincible. Ah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, now, granted, I'm coming from a place of I've read 70. We're still Walking Dead. So I'm mm-hmm. only read for Invincible, so I haven't given it its fair due yet. Mm, but maybe uh, the first couple of issues of Walking Dead, I was in. I was oh, that's true. In. That's yeah. true. That, that, that first issue of Walking Dead, I, I remember because, like, for the thing with the, with Kirkman and, and the Walking Dead, the comics anyway, each issue had just a horrible, horribly horrific cliffhanger at the end. Yeah. It, just, it forced you yeah. to go get the next issue. Not 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 the case with Invincible. Mm. Invincible, I think, or at least with this first volume. You're just kind of along for a ride. I'm, I, from what I've heard from other people, it gets much more complex and character driven, you know, later on in the series. But, 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 uh, but as of now, it was, it was childishly simple. Childishly simple. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've made no, no, uh, hidden secrets about. Uh, my thoughts on the art mm-hmm. on this book is very childish as well, mm-hmm. which is why I stayed away from it as long as I did. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I read it and I was like, that was four issues of a comic book that I read with my eyeballs. Mm. Fair enough. Yeah. So uh, let me just let me get your let me get your take on it, and then I'll mm-hmm. ask you another question. Um, w- based on what you've experienced so far, you see it as a, a go or no go for going to the next. Uh, come on, I said we say that for the end, man. Say it for the end. That for the end. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, we have a format to these things. You know, you know, I'm, you know. Uh, you're, trying, you're trying to sneak in the question all quick. I'm, I'm a rebel. Yeah. What can I say? <laughs> you're a rebel for your old rules that you <laughs> help create. That I help create, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so you've heard from people. Mm-hmm. You've, 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 you've read other stuff by Kirkman, and you yeah. see how simple this is. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to give you any spoilers. Word. But I will say... That yes, that this this all this stuff serves a purpose. You you, you revealed in an offline text outside of outside of work. Uh, that's, yeah, that's the, the work being the, the 
podcast. Oh, podcast is uh, work for me. So. It, it is. I mean, it's, it's, it's fun. It's work. You know, we don't get paid for it yet. It's, it's fun. Talking until to you, I got to sit down and edit it. Talking to you, Netflix. It's like so again. You, can, you, can, you can't hear the wink, but <laughs> it's there. Uh, the um, government's hacking to the webcam. Yeah. I saw you wink. Yeah, it's good. Um, but where was I going with this? Uh, it's, it, 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 it's, it's very simple. Okay, okay yeah. yeah. All right, so, um, <clears throat> you know you know Kirkman's, his, his style, his stuff. I will say that you, you, when we had that discussion outside, when yeah. you said that you knew why you didn't like Human Target. Mm-hmm. Because you don't like things, you like when things uh, start normal and get crazy. Yeah. But you don't like things that start crazy and then kind of go from there. Yeah. <clears throat> so, on um, with Saying that, without giving you any spoilers, uh, there is, with this series, there are multiple fans, Uh and there are multiple piles of increasingly high and corn-filled piles of shit, and all that stuff starts hitting all these fans. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's what I'm going to say about that. It's like, it it starts off simple enough. I've kind of felt the same way as you. I was like, oh yeah, this is kind of simplistic artwork. Yeah. Uh, The story is, it's it's third grader. It's just, it's right in there. Yeah. But I'm like, you know, hey, when I was, when I picked up Invincible, I was like, hey, I, I, I don't have the next issue Walking Dead I need something to give me that, that Kirkman-esque fix. Yeah. So I started reading Invincible and I was like, man, and I got to the place that if you keep reading, you're going to get to. Mm-hmm. You're going to be in. There's a reason this series has been going. Okay, as long so as it has. Uh, <laughs> piggybacking off of that, they had a huge sale a while back from Comicsology. Mm-hmm. Best friend, same one who said, "Hey, you check out that Batman Earth one." Mm-hmm. All right, I checked it out. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, he was also like, "Hey, you need to check out uh, the whole Spider Verse story." I checked it out. Mm-hmm. I enjoy Spider Verse. Mm-hmm. He's like, "You should check out Superior Spider Man." Check that out. Yeah. Ah, didn't like that as much, but it, yeah, the, the, the concept for for a Superior Spider Man was was good, but and then I guess it's like it's like people don't understand what comic books are these days. It's like, hey, Spider Man is dead, and then in the same issue, it's like, oh wait a minute, he's not really dead. He's he's, he's over here. We're, he's he's going to come back. Blah, blah blah. It's like Captain America is a Hydra. And, oh, Captain America is a Nazi. I'm like you. Don't understand how comic books work. And you know this shit ain't gonna last. It's not gonna last. Uh, yeah. But yeah, he told me. So he told me he picked up a bunch on this sale, mm-hmm. and he hit me up somewhere in like uh, volume two, and he was like, "Yo, this shit is whack." What? And for, that was for invincible. And uh-huh. I was like, "Where?" And he's like, "Yeah, but I, I bought a couple of volumes, so I might as well, uh, so I might as well check it out since I paid money for it." I hit him up like. I don't know, like three, four days later, and I was like, did you ever make it through anymore? He's like, dude, I'm all in on Invincible right yeah. now. I have to see this to the very end. Okay, yeah. okay, all right, yeah. You just let me know, man. <clears throat> it's just, if, if, if your mission, should you choose to accept it, mm-hmm. is going to be quite enjoyable. Okay, fair enough. It, uh, it's, it'll, it'll take you through some things. Well, let's talk about this art. Okay. Man, by Ryan Otley, if mm-hmm. I heard correctly. Yes. Uh, what are you guys seeing in this art? Uh, It's... Like I it's, up a it's, random... it's disarmingness, I guess you could say. It's 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 very. It, it gives you that comic book vibe, yeah. but you haven't gotten to any. I'm trying to remember if in this first four issues, have there been any? You know, Dave, you could reread these books before we do. Yeah, I, I could, I could, but you know, I, t- I try to go off memory, which is already pretty bad to begin yeah, with. Spotty, but uh, at spotty at best. Um, <clears throat> let, let me let me just put it to you this way: Have there been any murders? In these first four oh, no. as far as I remember, no, no murders. No. Okay, well, uh, when the murders start to happen, it goes into gruesome detail, and you will feel like, hey, this cartoonish element with these guts splattered and blood here and all this, and this looks wrong, but the the juxtaposition of that simple that simple quality mm-hmm. with the graphic nature of things, yeah, that that adds that punch, okay, all the more. Okay. I think that's why I think that's why Kirkman and and Ali chose to to work together because it, it was different from the obvious stuff from The Walking Dead where you had those visuals to kind of pull the thing along. Right. This one is more it 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 plays with that story driven and and visual nature. So mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. I say, it just mm-hmm. enjoy it. It's <clears throat> it's good. It's good. It's good. Now let's talk about his pops for a little bit. What what do you what's what's your thoughts on his pops in this? If you can remember. This oh, I, oh I know. I, I know. I, I remember. Yeah, his pops. His, yeah, his, <clears throat> his, his pops is, uh, 
standing, uh, upstanding citizen. He is here. Getting, <laughs> getting, getting the job done. I really like his pops, man. Yeah? Well, uh, tell me tell me what you think about him. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those deals where, you know, it's just work always has him out of the house. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Which you, we've seen that in a million different stories or mm-hmm. even in real life sometimes. Uh, but when he's around, man, he seems like a, a, a stand-up dude, man. He's, he's a cool dude. Like when he's, he's, a, he's around, a corner of the, 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 the community. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, he finds out his son has powers. He's like, then roll out with me and see what this is about. You know, sure. he pick up the family him. business. Yeah, yeah. I kind of, I kind of like that about his pops. You know, he's you know trapped in Dimension X or whatever it is for you know a good bit of that, that yeah. first volume. And, and his mom's mm-hmm. that's that's probably the most tragic character in the whole thing. Like, tragic. She's huh? just used to it at that point, man. Yeah. Like, and I feel I feel kind of bad. She's for her. she's already got the guy the, the husband who's who's off at work, and now she's about to lose her son to the same the same yeah, deal. She just looks tired in every panel she's in. It's yeah. like, oh well, this is the life I chose. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's no. I know you went to see Incredibles two recently. It's no mm-hmm. Incredibles. Uh, Incredibles two. I'm, I'm just saying, as far as the well, well, as may, 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 maybe it, maybe it is because well, yeah, because the whole family was involved with it versus yeah it versus is. yeah, just the, the husband always being gone and yeah. you know, the son about to be gone a lot. It's, yeah, it's not quite as comparable, I don't think. Yeah. So mm-hmm. let me ask you this: When are you? Are, so are we, are we at this? Any other things you want to add to that? Uh, uh at this point, yes. At this point, yes. Yes. Okay. So you're, you're gonna you would you would you would go you would continue reading. I suppose I will. Yeah. I, enough people have said that things get better, so I just gotta try to push through the whackness. Uh, push that through the is whackness. This first couple of volumes. Well, I shouldn't have to push through the whackness. Well, when when are you going to start reading the rest of it? Uh, gonna... No telling. I mean, I no gotta telling. do these, you gotta, these you books just... for the show. Other books that I'm already trying to finish up reading. I understand. I mean, I've got I've got. I know you're not looking forward to. Uh, not the, the, books, this the books in the, in the J's not here. We, we, got, we had Jupiter's all. Legacy coming up as well as JLA Earth 2 written by Grant Morrison and, and drawn by your favorite artist, Frank Quitely. Dude, it's the worst. I'm just saying. So I'm not looking forward to that Before you read JLA Earth 2, check out, I'd say, if you can, because you, you, you have at least two more volumes yes. worth of... Okay. Go ahead and read those two more volumes. Uh, I might try to read one more volume. I'm not going to have time for two more. All right, let's, let's try, try one. Okay, try one. I don't. I don't know if you'll be able to get to <coughs> murders just okay. by then. But but we'll see. We'll see. Just, just give it. Give it. Give it another. Give another shot. Continue. So news yeah. broke. Oh. I'm not sure. If, oh my uh, water! Oh wait. wait. <laughs> if you saw this news that broke earlier today, I didn't. You might have been at work. I was in under a rock. Invincible animated series coming to Amazon. What? Yep. Yeah, they'll be adapted to an animated <laughs> series uh, as part of Kirkman's overall deal uh, with Amazon. Uh, the Teen Titans showrunner will be running Invincible, and, yeah, and Kirkman uh, will be serving as the executive producer. It's coming to what channel now? Amazon. Amazon. Okay. Am- that, that's yeah. Because it would not go to. It would not go to. Cartoon yeah. Network. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it. It. It wouldn't make Adult Swim. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, then. Yeah. Quote from Kirkman, what Amazon is allowing us to do in animated form, nothing short of groundbreaking, and I can't wait for our rabbit fan base to experience it, Damn. man. Mm. Uh, yeah, so boom. What do you uh, What do you think about this? Is this something I remember you're seeing, Is this something we need? I remember seeing a like a motion comic of Invincible a few years back, and mm-hmm. I thought, oh, that's cool. They're kind of doing the thing that you know the Audio Nights Theater is doing with its motion comics, mm-hmm. um, and it was it was cool. They had a little kind of the, the the guiding the guided reading kind of thing, have some of the words populating in the 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 bubbles and what have you. Uh-huh. But it was it was limited animation at best. It was just kind of slight motions, kind of like the that Marvel uh, extremists and stuff that they put on um, what was it not like YouTube? It was on Netflix for a for a time. They kept they had the animated. Like the Black Panther series, yeah, and that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, so it was yeah. kind of like slight motions. We got to see some flashes of mm-hmm. power and that kind of stuff. Uh, so it was it was okay, but I was like, it's just not it's not the full thing. Yeah, everyone wants full animation, hands down. Whenever you whenever people think animation, they want to see shit animated. They think Animaniacs. Well, mm-hmm. sometimes. <laughs> um, so I just knew, I knew it was destined for something more, and the fact that it's getting a uh, getting a green light on Amazon um, it gives them freedom. Gives them freedom. They can, they can go man. They can do 
The murder. The murder. <laughs> that Dave keeps talking about. Yeah, it's, just, it's so great. I, it's, so I don't recall if this next volume is going to get into that, that the first turn, uh, the first bit of shit that starts like flicking itself against the fan. Okay. But it just, it's this, this series, man. It, you know, say you, you want you want stuff to build towards weird. It starts building towards weird, and it starts throwing stuff at it, and in Kirkman style of just elevating the tension, it just keeps going. Uh huh. Okay. It, you don't. You at this point, you don't know. You just you can't fathom how deep into the shit it gets. All right then. Yeah. Okay then. Yeah. You got anything else, sir? Uh, that's it. I just, I just want you to read the, you know, the next, next bits of it. I just want you to keep going. All right. Then. Because you know, I love you. You're, oh, my, yeah, you're my friend. I love and you too. I, I, I want you to read good things. All right then. So yes. yeah, I, I guess I suppose. Well, you've already go. It's a go for me. <laughs> Double go. Double uh, go. On episode. Is this? Yeah. Is this? Is it's this, been a little while because I didn't while go on though. Human Target. No, you didn't go on Human Target. What was it before was the that? G's. You didn't go on Grass Kings. Yeah, I didn't go on Grass Kings. Oh, uh, comes before G. Yeah, A B C D. Yeah. F was. Fables, which you got on. Yeah. And what did you do? What did I do? What did you do? It wasn't that? Ghost Rider. No, it was the it was the the uh, the F the uh, final, the the F oh, the future foundation. Future foundation. All right. Yeah. yeah so that so was we, last we, time. That was double go. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. last time. Right, so it's been a little while. We're yeah. back in the double go mark. Double go mark. And a little quick preview. I know you gave ourselves a preview of uh, what's coming up next. Mm-hmm. I got Jupiter's Legacy by. Mark Miller and oh, yeah, yeah, double Frank, Frank Quitely. Quitely. Yeah, yeah, it's double Frank. This is one of those ones. I'm I, surprised, sir. Yeah, 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 I remember the the. I started hating this joint. I was like, oh, I guess we'll be better. And then we got JLA Earth Two uh-huh. by Grant Morrison. So we're gonna have to have a a Frank Quitely. Uh, we're gonna have a Frank off. Hold on, I'm a Frank okay. off. Frank <laughs> off. <laughs> uh, we're gonna become Francophones after this. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I remember. I'm gonna get this. you reading new X Men. Oh God, no! I've seen, no. That's yeah. that that artist specifically. I was like, I will never read New X Men. <laughs> that, that, that was that was terrible. That marked that marked a major turning point because it was it was right after the whole Age of Apocalypse thing, yeah, yeah. where Scott had been taken over as the host for Apocalypse the first time, yeah. and Scott had just started becoming cool. But then in New X Men, he really became who he needs to be. There's a scene in the that, that was, or well, I mean. He, no, he was he was a douchebag before. He's a jerk in the new stuff. Okay, but he's he's a jerk with a purpose. Okay, um, a great scene in New X Men where uh, there's there are things going on in the uh, in the X Mansion and and like everyone's powers have been been muted. Yeah. and so there's a scene in which uh, Scott is like facing the 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 reader, like just looking straight on, no glasses. Yeah. You know, like so, so everyone's depowered. So he's he's able to you know just use his normal sight or whatever. Yeah. And he has has a handgun, and he's he has it pointed this way, yeah. and has just shot someone. And he's he's talking to I think it's Beast or someone. He's like, you would not believe the day I'm having. He has a smile. Yeah. On his face. <laughs> okay. He's like he's like you would not believe the day I've been having. Okay. <laughs> it's, right. it's fucking it's fucking great. That sounds great. Yeah. But then I imagine it with Frank quietly art. I know. Good. I know. It, it's. That always takes it down a notch. Yes, it takes it down. Just a uh, notch. You did well. Did you did you like All Star Superman? Did you read? It? Yes, I did. Yeah. And the story was good. Art was not. Well, I'm just saying it was it was good in spite of the art. In I'm just that's of, that's what yes. I'm saying about New X Men. It's okay. good in spite of the art. In spite of everyone looking like that, you know when when you first start drawing mm-hmm. and you have the person and you have the bicep because you have to have to draw the muscular dude yeah. and it's just a bunch of arcs that you've been creating <laughs> yeah. you don't know basic anatomy yep. it's just a bunch of arcs that just go down it's like one giant worm coming off of their, their body <laughs> that's what Frank Quietly's humans look like oh god he's men like, and the women well, look the same it's like I can't tell maybe maybe Frank Quietly is the is the hero of the LG T B Q I A. Everybody is the same. Everyone's the same. Everyone's equal. Everyone's androgynous <laughs> as fuck. <laughs> so well, we'll get to all that next episode when mm-hmm. we talk uh, talk art quietly. Yeah. So the thing is, I, I can I can stand his art. It's it's not my favorite, but like I say, for the stuff that he like the people he's worked with, like you know Warren Ellis and Mark Millar. Mm-hmm. Uh, who's this guy, Grant Morrison? Grant I mean, Morris. yeah, some they, of the best writers in the game. It's like. 
if it wasn't for the writers, he would he'd be done. Yeah. <laughs> he, <laughs> yes. he, he knows how to come up to some place hat in hand. <laughs> like, I could do art. I could do art. Like, Fuck, we need somebody for this. Can you do more than just the, the arcs on the arm <laughs> that looks like worms? No, not really, but I can make them convincing worms. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right, fine. Yeah. So, anyway. We'll get, right, we'll get I guess done. that's it for this episode of the ABC. We'll do it. <sighs> we'll see you guys on the next episode. If there are things that you want us to do differently, uh, say something. So send us messages. So talk in the comments. Say, hey, you forgot this, or hey, here's this bit of information, or hey, talk about this next time. We want to oh. we hear from you. Yes, yes we, we, we do. We might not take your word for it. We might not do anything you ask of us, but you can at least voice. Voice your opinions. Yes, we listen to, we, we read every five emails that we get. <laughs> On a good day. On a good day. <laughs>